Hello, this is Wendy Larson, and I'm pleased to provide this update on our progress on the WASH benefits accounting framework. Um, I'll be covering uh, information about our work since the last partner meeting in January, uh, as well as the launch that we did in New York City during UN Water Week. Just uh, as a refresher, the project objectives for this work are to strengthen the business case for WASH investments and move beyond beneficiary counting toward outcomes and impacts, to link WASH more comprehensively to volumetric water benefit accounting, which is um, something we'll talk about a little bit more as we go through these uh, the work that we've been doing, and embed indicators of leading practice, including climate resilient WASH, and really uh, address the fragmentation of existing approaches in this space and bring everything together into one resource. We're following the WASH impact pathway, moving from inputs um, through activities, outputs, outcomes, and impacts. So inputs would be the time and the resources and the costs that go into a project. And then activities are the WASH-related interventions. Outputs are the tangible direct changes and deliverables that are generated through implementation of a project. And that's where the volumes, the volumetric water benefits come in. Uh, and then as we move further to the right, outcomes are the short and medium term changes that result uh, directly or indirectly from implementation. And then the impacts would be the longer term lasting changes. So outcomes and Im impacts are considered benefits or the positive changes that uh, result from the project, ultimate changes. There's a lot on this slide. I just wanted to highlight, uh, this is showing the first two buckets of the impact pathway, inputs and activities. Inputs may be investments in things like infrastructure, uh, stakeholder engagement, monitoring, communications, those types of things. And the scope of the investments uh, are employees and workplaces, communities, households, supply chains, and the environment. Um, it's important to note that these are focused on WASH-related interventions, not non-WASH interventions, such as uh, reforestation, for example, upstream in the watershed that can positively impact WASH. Also, climate resilient WASH is relevant to many of the, of the activities that are shown on this slide. So on the right side, we, you can see the different activities are organized by water access, sanitation access, hygiene access and institutional changes. Uh, and each of those has uh, example activities listed under the main category. Now moving to outputs. Um, again, outputs are the direct, uh, measurable, um, tangible uh, outputs from an activity. And we've organized these by socioeconomic, environmental and institutional. Each output indicator is categorized as core, uh, which is bolded or advanced. And we'll go, go through these uh, in more detail. Um, and so for example, under socioeconomic for output, we have um, for improved wash systems, the number of systems, the number of female friendly systems would be examples of core indicators. Uh, and down at the bottom, improved provision of water, that would be uh, volume provided um, as a core indicator. And then under environmental, we have, uh, for example, volume treated as a indicator of reduced pollution uh, and reduced withdrawal as an indicator of reduced water demand. So these are uh, examples of indicators that you'll find in the volumetric water benefit accounting document that companies are using to calculate the volumetric water benefits of their investments, including WASH investments, um, whether they be, it depends on what kind of an activity it is. If it's involving treating water to improve water quality, then we would look at the, for example, the volume treated. There's also a category of institutional um, outputs, and those are things like improved allocation of finances um, and improved opportunities, improved government. Um, the report encourages that these indicators be disaggregated by gender, age group, location, for example, workplace or home. 
uh, sector and technology type where relevant. Now moving to the furthest uh, side of the impact pathway, the benefits, outcomes, and impacts. Um, in terms of socioeconomic benefits, we're looking at um, uh, improved wash access, improved economic and livelihood opportunities, and you can see the indicators listed there. Again, the core indicators are in bold and uh, the others are considered advanced indicators. Um, and we have um, improved health and well-being, improved educational opportunities, and improved gender equality as other examples of uh, outcomes and impacts that are addressed. We also are looking at environmental and institutional outcomes and impacts shown here. So for example, under environmental, um, improved water quality uh, would be an example, improved climate adaptation and mitigation and improved water security. Uh, and the indicators are listed here. Under institutional, for example, improved financial return on investment, improved reputation or license to operate for the company, improved employee satisfaction, these types of things. Uh, and also uh, for impacts, um, improved water governance, uh, improved knowledge and awareness and, and understanding and improved community resilience. So uh, just to bring these to real world examples, uh, these, this slide shows for water access, how we move through the impact pathway for uh, example, when there are inputs in infrastructure, investment in infrastructure, investments in capacity building and training, uh, these activities might be a new access to a water source, like a household water connection, uh, water access training and education, these types of things. Um, and then outputs in, the, in this example would be improved wash systems, improved provision of water, and improved allocation of finances. And then moving further to the right, the outcomes and impacts are improved wash access, improved health and well being, uh, improved educational opportunities, and improved climate adaptation and mitigation. The table down below walks you through um, each of these steps for uh, what would be the example indicator, what is the calculation method, and then a description of the calculation method. And the report has appendices that describe the calculation methods in detail. Another example would be for sanitation access, where we're looking at household connections to a wastewater treatment facility as an example. And there are a number of outputs for this, improved wash systems, increased number of beneficiaries, reduced pollution. Uh, and then moving further to benefits, outcomes and impacts, an example would be improved health and well being, improved water quality, these types of things. And again, the table is showing, uh, for example, for reduced pollution as an output, uh, leading to improved health and well being as a benefit. Um, we show the indicators and the calculation method <clears throat> and a description of the calculation method. And we'll share these slides uh, with you so that you can. Uh, take a closer look at, at these examples. I know there's, there's quite a bit of information on these slides. And then the final example for hygiene access would be investments in, uh, for example, uh, new access to community hand washing facilities, hygiene training and ed education. And um, an example of a, an out, um, of a output for that would be, for example, um, improved provision of water or improved opportunities and then leading to, for example, improved gender equality, improved knowledge and awareness. So uh, down below again would be examples of how we work through that in the, in the report. So some of the methods are an expansion of volumetric water benefit accounting methods. Uh, and those are shown in the table on the left. What we're doing is th the volumetric water benefit accounting work uh, focused on all types of water stewardship activities that may that a company may invest in uh, nature-based solutions, for example. So WASH is included in there, but it's got a bit of a light touch. And in this work, we're digging deeper and we're expanding on some of the methods. And you can see 
uh, on the left table, what we're doing, for example, on the number of direct beneficiaries, we're providing additional context and guidance that goes beyond what is in VWBA. And then we're developing some new methods and those are listed on the, on the right side. Um, these are methods that uh, are not included in VWBA and um, we felt were through the through our work with with um, stakeholders uh, were important to include. During the next phase of work, we'll be divide, developing guidance for business use and implementation of this method. And uh, we've been getting some good suggestions on um, content content for that guidance. Um, and we ex anticipate that it will include information on setting WASH targets and goals, um, how to apply these methods, um, collection of data, who's responsible for collecting the data, what type and level of data to collect and, and how often, uh, and also the timeline expected to see benefits. Um, we've had a lot of interesting discussion on this topic of short, medium, and long-term benefits. Um, lessons from previous implementation of WASH projects and evaluation of benefits, and then how does this fit in with other methodologies and, and initiatives that are ongoing? Uh, for example, um, VWBA is, we're in the process of updating it, and VWBA 2.0 will be coming out in 2024, so uh, we'll be touching on that topic as well. So thanks, Cheryl, back to you. Excellent. Thank you, Wendy.